Welcome, Bridge Community Church, to uh, our Sunday worship. We want to thank you for being here. We want to say hello. We're going to join together in worship in a short moment after I've prayed. Karen's going to lead us in the song that says, We say yes. My soul says yes. So join with me. You can stand, you can raise your hands, or you can sit and be comfortable. It's up to you. But let's just pray and then we'll go into Karen leading us in worship. Father God, thank you, Lord, that we can stand before you this morning and we can say yes to you. Thank you, Lord, that you accept our worship. Thank you, Lord, that you accept our praise. And Father, we pray that as we do that this morning, your name will be glorified, your name will be uplifted. Father, we pray that today would be a glorious day, a day of blessing for both us, but more importantly, for you as we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Karen. We choose to serve you, to follow where you lead, to be your witness, to be your hands and feet. We choose to serve you, to follow where you lead, to be your witness, to be your hands and feet. Cause we say yes, my soul says yes, whatever you have for me, whatever lies ahead. And we say yes, my soul says yes, whatever you have for me, whatever lies season we can trust in you for you are with us you are always good because we say yes my soul says yes whatever you have for me whatever lies ahead we say Now, usually at this stage in the meeting, we would have announcements, but there are none, except to say 
when you normally would come to church, we would have a bulletin and it'd be uh, at the door. The ushers would give you a bulletin and have all the information that you need for that particular week. Well, you're going to receive that bulletin by email. We're going to send that out through our Church Suite app and you can have it in your inbox on your email. That will be the way that you will begin to get the announcements and the notices of all the events and the meetings that are taking place. So look out for your inbox, check out the announcements so that you stay up to date with all that's happening. We're going to continue in worship. We're going to sing What a Beautiful Name and What a Beautiful Name It Is.
Right, folks, get your Bibles ready. Switch your devices on. Patience is going to come and do the reading for us. Thank you, Patience. Our reading today is from Ephesians 4, from 11 to 16. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edification of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro and carried with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking in the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, for whom, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Amen. Thank you, patience. So, the question after that reading is, how are we measuring up? How are we measuring up as a church? How are we measuring up as a people of God? When you read any of Paul's letters to the New Testament churches, you discover similar themes running in each and similar metaphors being used by him. He's trying to provoke, to challenge, and to teach the growing Christian movement in how they can properly measure up to being all that Jesus wants them to be as a fellowship. This morning, I wanna turn Paul's spotlight on us here at Bridge Community Church. How are we doing? What are we doing? How are we measuring up? Are we measuring up to what Jesus wants us to be? 2020 has been a tough year on many levels, and we've had to face huge challenges in physical, and emotional ways. We've had to adapt to new ways of working, new ways of worshiping, new ways of living. We've adapted to some things that hopefully won't last forever and adopted other things that probably will last forever. As pastors, we recently had our annual conference, the Elim Leadership Summit. Usually it takes place in the flesh at Harrogate Conference Centre. But for obvious reasons, it took place online this year. It actually went pretty well. And some even preferred it this way. But one thing that I personally miss is having actual in-person catch-ups with old friends. Friends who you haven't seen for a long, long time because they're actually miles away. Asking them how they're actually doing and seeing how they really are. One thing I don't miss is how some of these conversations tend to go. Pastors can be quite insecure sometimes, so often the conversation will veer towards comparison. And questions like, how many people have you got coming to your church these days? How many folk does your building hold? Are your offerings good? Well, these seem to be the modern measures of how a church is doing. Interestingly, when Paul writes, he never asks the Galatians, for instance, how many people do you have coming to your church? Never asks that. He never once says to the Ephesians, how big is your building? Because they didn't have one. He does teach the Corinthians about giving, but he doesn't ask them about the size of their offering. These are not Paul's measures. Instead, he writes to the Christians scattered across the Roman Empire, churches that he himself pioneered and established to grow and develop and reflect Jesus in their culture and in their corner of the world. And he's looking out for growth, of course, but he's concerned to hear and enthusiastic to teach them on three primary areas, qualities, that are so crucial for the health of any fellowship. Let me read the opening verses of Colossians chapter 1. 
the first five verses. He says this, This letter is from Paul, chosen by God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and from our brother Timothy. It is written to God's holy people in the city of Colossae, who are faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. May God our Father give you grace and peace. We always pray for you and we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard that you trust in Christ and that you love all of God's people. You do this because you are looking forward to the joys of heaven, as you have been ever since you first heard the truth of the good news. This same good news that came to you is going out all over the world. It is changing lives everywhere, just as it changed yours that very first day you heard and understood the truth about God's great kindness to sinners. He mentions faith, he mentions trust, or in some versions, hope, and he mentions love. They're the measures that Paul is looking for in every church. They're the qualities that he really wants to hear the news about. How is your faith doing? How much are you trusting or hoping in Jesus? How are you developing that? And how's your love? Are you sharing that love? He also writes to the Thessalonians. Timothy has returned, bringing good news about your faith and love. He'd sent Timothy, his young assistant, to go to the Thessalonians to encourage them. Timothy had returned with a great report. Their faith and their love are growing and developing. He does the same with the church meeting in Philemon's house. I keep hearing about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people. So how do we grow up into the church Jesus wants us to be? I think the clear message from Paul in our text today is that we all have to work together. Yes, God has provided, as the reading says, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. But if it, that isn't his plan for them alone to do the work. They are to prepare God's people for the work. And the church only truly matures when, as verse 16 puts it, each part does its work. Therefore, the question that we have to ask ourselves is, am I playing my part? Am I measuring up to how Jesus would have me measure up? We have some amazing older people in BCC. And it's been such a blessing through the two lockdowns that we've had this year to know that some of our older members have really taken it upon themselves to show care, to show love and support to many by telephoning around quite sizable groups of folk. I asked Maureen Fielding if she would allow me to interview her. She's a humble lady and she wasn't keen to be all over the internet, but she generously agreed. So let's listen to Maureen now. Okay, so I'm with Maureen, Maureen Fielding. And Maureen, you've been coming to Bridge Community Church or formerly Bridge Street Church for how long? Oh, it could be 50, 60, 70 years, couldn't it? 70 years? Yeah, that sounds wow. crazy, doesn't it? So who was the pastor when you first started I coming? I think it was Pastor Miles. And how old were you? How old was I? Back then? I, was, I forget how old I was when I got... I was, I was a teenager. Yeah. So and how old were you when you got saved? That was... It's a double story, isn't that? It, it was... Our, I was a student when I became a Christian. That's... Um, well, I'd be about... 1920 something like that you know wow, wow. yeah so, and you've got three daughters yeah all lovely i think they are they are they're good to me the lovely girls. you've got cheryl and cheryl cheryl and, and then you've got Shelley. one that's a bit troublesome that's <laughs> married to my colleague david andy. smith <laughs> no no oh, andy lancaster I'm thinking, yeah i'm thinking of yeah, melanie is married to andy 
Shelley, Cheryl is lives in Harrow, goes to the Church of England there. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, Shelley lives down in Oxford and she's married to... Wow, to David. David Smith, who David is Stuart Smith. Nan's son. Yes. Um, and they go to a local, I think it's a church Methodist or something mm. like that, you know. Mm. So these are strange times, aren't they? 2020 mm. has been a very strange year. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you've coped with with 2020 well my hobby is gardening and whenever the weather's fine i love to be outside there and i've been working really hard to get it sort of clear ready for winter when the bad weather comes so i love gardening and i relax a lot like that, that way and it's done me good health wise mm. but also i like to walk so i walk down to my village mm. and back that takes what about an hour and you come back feeling good, you know, it's done you good. Mm. And mm. Um, and what support have you received during this time? Obviously, we've not been able to see each other at church no. very often. Yeah. So how, how have you received any support? Yeah. I, I must tell you that one of my girls decided that she wanted us to have a, a, a girly holiday and we were booked to go to Cyprus mm. in April. So that meant that... We bo it was booked, but we couldn't go. Oh. So we had hot sunshine here. Mm. Um, so let me think. So I, I have a friend, and she's a Catholic. Yeah. And um, she rang me one morning. She says, Maureen, that she and her son, who is the boy's not very well, she said, would you pray for us, with us? We pray uh, from eleven o'clock to half past. I think it was. And she said, I'd uh, I'd love you to pray. She said, I've also invited. A friend of ours, of both ours, that's a Christian that goes to the Shadow Methodist, and she says, "Yes, she'll come. She'll pray." We prayed in our own homes, but that really, it really shook me, you know. And I thought, "This is fantastic." Next day, I went, I rang her. I said, "Thank you so much. That has really meant a lot to me to hear that you're asking us to pray all together like that." Mm. And um, and then I thought to myself, "Maureen, get your act together." Come on, what about BCC? Fantastic. You know, and uh, so I thought, yeah, I know. Maybe I can. I'll ring people up and just say hi. How are you doing? Which I did, and um, it was lovely. I mean, some people were just chatted, and other people, you know, if they wanted prayer, I was I prayed with them, mm -hmm. and then often they would pray with me. Brilliant. You know, which to me that was just lovely. So um, you received help and support, which then prompted you. Yeah. To also give help yes, and support. Yeah. How many people are you ringing regularly then now? I've not rung as many people lately. I think people seem to have got established in mm. this sort of a lifestyle, if you understand mm. me. But you're to touching but, base with people, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, it was, must have been 30 odd. Because I know I, I measured at first, wow. I think Andy asked me, and I said, I think I've done 20 recently. Wow. But I mean, some of them I rang again, yeah. you know. And that, so. Um, it was nice, just, and I hope they appreciated it as I'm well. I'm sure, I'm sure. Because, you know, uh, it's not easy, is it, going to all these weeks? Well, I'll tell you what, Maureen, I mean, for somebody who would be, let's put this kindly, one of the older members of the church, yeah, I would say that you're a terrific example. It's and not me. Um, I know you don't think that. No, it's and not. And I know me. you certainly it's don't so want special. the applause for it, but yeah. you are. The Bible says, doesn't it, be an example to one another. Mm. And you're inspiring, you're encouraging, yeah, yeah. and I hope that this little video mm. will inspire other people to yeah. do the same as you. Thank you, Maureen. That was brilliant. I wonder what the Apostle Paul would write if he heard about the love Maureen was displaying. I'm sure that he would hold her up as an example to the rest of us. She is certainly playing her part. The church in Ephesus were reminded by Paul that the church is like a body. Some parts are more on show than others, but all parts are important to the health of the overall body. Another of our senior ladies is doing a fantastic job. She didn't want to be interviewed, but Barbara, who heads up the Monday Afternoon Ladies Friendship Group, is doing an amazing ministry keeping that group connected and cared for. I'll get in trouble now 
for mentioning her, but she does it as her worship to God and we're all the stronger church for it. God bless you, Barbara, for ringing around the people that you are ringing around. The Bible exhorts us to be examples to one another. In 1 Timothy 4.12, Paul encourages the young man to be an example in all areas of his life to the fellow believers. One of the not so young men in BCC is Theo. I interviewed Theo to see how he had been coping with lockdown and how he too was playing his part. Let's listen to Theo now. Okay, so um, I'm with Theo, Theo Hendrickson. And uh, Theo, well, you're a lovely man. And uh, you've been coming to BCC or Bridge Street for how long? For as long as I can remember. <laughs> it's so many years. I'm not too certain as to the exact date, but I know it's quite, it's quite a long time now, going back in the old days. Um, I have a record upstairs, but it isn't that really kept. But you're not very old now, are you? I mean, you don't look old. I am an old man, really. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, well, I, I try my best to keep fit, and um, maybe that's why I'm probably not showing my, my age as much. Absolutely. Yeah. You're, you're in good nick, as they say. <laughs> oh, <thank> so, <laughs> 2020 has been a very tough year for, for, for all of us. Um how have you coped this year? Well, 2020 has been a year of difficulty, disappointment. Um, folks have been disadvantaged. There's been loneliness. And in spite of all of that, I do find that I've been quite okay. I've coped with the situation quite well. Um... Are you a guy? Are you? Do you tend to be more positive in your outlook? Yes, I. I, I yes, I am. Um, there are little negative areas, uh, times when I, I do feel a little sad, especially when I think of um, my daughter Karen, mm. and especially those moments mm. leading up to her passing away. Very tough. Um, I think also of not having the uh, ability or have. Ha not being able to visit the grandchildren mm. and not being able to come to um, the services of BCC mm. as often as I would like to, mm. uh, to meet up with friends and um, just just to be a part. And, and you, Theo, you would be quite a regular in the cafe at BCC as well. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You and your friend John. Yes, yes. And sit there chattering away. And writing all the wrongs and talking about the RAF. Oh, yes, 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 we do, we do that. Um, and um, he's, he's a great guy, he's, um, he's John, really. Absolutely. Yeah. We're talking about John Lancaster, folks. Yes. So, um, what support have you had this year and, and how has that been shown? Uh, support, I, I do get support from individuals within the church. Um I thought about this and wonder, wondered whether it would be worth mentioning names, but I do feel that there are certain names that I should mention, really. Go ahead. Um, Maureen Fielding has been very supportive. Mm. She phones me on a regular basis. Mm. Uh, we have long conversations. Mm. Um, sometimes when I, look on the, mm. <laughs> when I look at my phone, it could be going close to an hour and we've, we've, we've had beautiful conversation. Um, there, there are others too. Um, we have the Lancasters, um, Pastor John. He's a friend, um, a long-term friend. Um, we speak of the old, the old RF days. Brilliant. <laughs> and he phones me regularly just to make sure that I'm okay. I, I do the same. And mm. so we have a very good relationship there. Really. Mm. So mm. there is that support, really. There are others within the, within the, within the church fellowship or the church family mm. um, who, who actually gets in touch um, Maybe it's not a good thing to mention them because there's mm. always the possibility mm. of forgetting a name. But Marion Barnes, mm. she's one of those people who have, have phoned me in the past and we yeah. have a chat and she would say, well, why don't you come around? Let's have a chat. And That's great. Like that. So great. There, there are people who are quite supportive and, and, and I really appreciate that and would yeah. like to express my sincere thanks Brilliant. for that support. And you yourself, 
that's prompted you to also share that support and you've been ringing other people. Oh, you? yes, yes. I'm a, per I'm a people, people's person. <laughs> so how, how, how many people I, are you ringing on a regular basis? Um, I, I ring quite a lot, quite a, quite a few folks, really. Um, it's just recently that I haven't really um, done a great deal of, of that or even visiting mm. um, because of the pandemic. Um, but I do miss that, really. I do miss that personal contact. Mm. Okay, the phone is... Texting and phoning now is about the only means of uh, being in contact with individuals. So I, I phone as many people as I can. Mm. And um, it's good to keep that connection into Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, folks who are Glenn's friends, mm. I, still, I still keep in touch with them. You see. Mm. Mm. Well, Theo, you're a brilliant example to people of any generation, any culture. You know, it's what we should be doing as a church. We should be connecting with each other. We should be showing that love. Yeah. Showing that care, showing that con concern for people, and just strengthening each other in the faith. That's what Christianity is all about. It's mm. not about what we can do for ourselves. Mm. It's about what we can do for others. It, it, I, I get a, I get an enormous amount of pleasure just in knowing that I can help someone. Mm. And if we are not able uh, to do that, if we don't feel that this is the right thing to do, then I think that it makes our Christianity of None effect really. Brilliant. Yeah. You're giving people hope. Oh, and that's hope, a good yes. thing. We have a hope. Yeah. And our hope is on in, in Jesus. Yeah. For you know, sure. the, the, I think it was just last week we were singing uh, the song about our hope being in, 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 in Christ. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Theo. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Brilliant. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. It's remarkable how Theo and Maureen have both mentioned that people calling them to see how they were prompted them to call others to do the same and this is how love is put into practice it's put into action and how love is spread throughout the fellowship of God's people faith hope and love are important ingredients vital ingredients in any fellowship and what these lovely people are doing is fulfilling all that Paul was looking for when measuring the New Testament churches. Spreading the love encourages others in their faith and increases or reminds them of their hope in Jesus. The opposite to that is isolation and loneliness and the lack of friendship. And that is fertile ground, perfect ground for the enemy to cultivate fear and hopelessness and defeat. This is why Paul taught the Corinthians that all three of these qualities were good, but love is the greatest. You see, out of love, faith and hope spring. Why is love the greatest? Because it's the very essence of God himself. 1 John 4 verse 8 says, God is love. Now, don't be misguided down the same road as the Beatles when they sang, all you need is love. Because love has to be grounded in a person to be really effective. And love is grounded in the very nature and personality of our creator. It's not an immaterial force. It originates in him. That's why John says, God is love. Therefore, all you need is God. Sharing love with each other is reflecting the love of our good Father who loves us with an everlasting love. Jesus teaches in Matthew 22 that all the scriptures can be summed up in just two directives. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. So loving is what any church should be seeking to be the measure of what we are truly meant to be doing as Jesus requires. Loving exalts God and reflects his character throughout the body. Loving, loving also radiates outwards. So if we are loving and showing love within the body, that should also be us loving and showing love radiating out amongst the people, our neighbours who don't yet know him. Now, lockdown presents us with a real problem, doesn't it? Because we could be quite lazy and shrug off 
and say, well, there's not a lot that we can do in lockdown. I can't go out. I can't even see anybody. Never mind, love my neighbours. Well, don't, don't simply shrug it off. Don't forget the simple stuff, is what I would say. Let the example of the older members of Bridge Community Church who have been such an inspiration this morning, let them be an example to you to maybe you lift the phone and call somebody. Send someone a message, whether it be through social media, WhatsApp, or actually phoning them. Call fellow Christians and spread the love in that way. Maybe people who you haven't seen for such a, a long time, call them. But also, don't forget the people who don't know Jesus. Maybe you've got a number for a, a, a friend who you haven't seen for a long time. Maybe you know a neighbour's number who, who lives near you. Call them. Love is the bridge that God has given us to connect this world to him. How will they get to know him unless somebody like you or I shares that love and walks across that bridge? In John 13, 35, Jesus says, By this will all men know that you are my disciples because of your love for one another. He made the ultimate bridge in his sacrifice on the cross. We sing that song, don't we? Amazing love, how can it be? So, how are we measuring up? Or actually, the question is, how are you measuring up? I hope and trust the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. And it might be good during this last song from Karen, if you just reflect on that, what are you saying to me, Holy Spirit? Who can I call? Who can I show love to that might promote faith and hope in their lives? God bless you. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of
I'm going to close with uh, an encouragement that Paul is writing to the church in Colossae. He'll excuse me for my slight paraphrase as I close, but he writes this in uh, Colossians 4, verse 5. Live wisely amongst those who are not Christians and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation on the phone be gracious and effective so that you will have the right answer for everyone. Father, bless us throughout this week. May our conversations with each other and our friends and maybe people who we haven't spoken to in a long time, may they be seasoned by your grace and may they produce love and faith and hope for your glory. Amen.